So in this lecture, I'm going to talk about the concept of APC, but the main topic of this lecture is the B cell activation. Earlier we talked about the activation of T cells. Those particular T cells in turn activate a special kind of cells which are known as B cell or we can also call them B lymphocytes. So I will try to give a brief idea about APC and then I will finally talk about the B cell activation. So here as you can see on your screen again I'm using this theft analogy which is quite simple analogy and you can see the picture of a person there. This particular person seems quite glum, quite depressed and down because quite recently many valuable items were stolen from his house. So now he's looking for the name of the person that committed that crime. So there comes this other person. He took something out of his pocket and gave it to the owner of the house. Actually, he's presenting an envelope to the owner of the house. And this envelope contains the name of that thief or that person that was responsible for committing this theft. And now after receiving the name of the thief, this person has multiple options. The owner of the house has multiple options. He can take the matter into his own hands and then he can take the help from similar persons like him. Quite the way it can be compared to the WBCs that after the attack, after recognizing a pathogen, they start multiplying. They produce copies of themselves and then all the cells together fight against that particular pathogen. So there is this one option, but this cell or this person can also take this other option where he can take the envelope and he can approach some authorities like police department or some other security official and then he can present or give the identity of this particular thief to them and then they can take counter measurements against that thief. So you can get the idea that T cells, T cells are something like that. Sometimes they are there to fight against the pathogen themselves, but they also have the option of activating the B cells, B lymphocytes, and then B cells can produce certain different things, can produce multiple actions against the pathogen, like they can produce antibodies which can ultimately decide the kind of counter mechanism that should be used against pathogen. So you can get the idea. Now I'm trying to explain everything in terms of immune system. So here you can see a macrophage. This is a macrophage. It's a little quick recap of the activation of T cells. And then after that, I'm going to quickly explain the activation of B cells. So here you can see a macrophage and this particular thing here. This is a virus or the pathogen or the viral particle. And this macrophage is a phagocyte. So it has the ability to engulf this particular virus. And yes, it is acting as an APC antigen presenting cells like the way security guard presented the envelope to the owner of the house. Quite similarly, this macrophage has the ability to present something to some other cells. I will come to that. Here you can see this is the viral particle and it would be engulfed by the macrophage in this fashion, in this manner. And after engulfing, we know that cells have lysosomes and lysozymes and lysosomes have the digestive enzyme within themselves. And by using those digestive enzyme, it will degrade this particular or any particular antigen or the viral particle. And after breaking it down, you can see many different fragments, the fragments that belong to the virus. So ultimately lysosome is responsible for the breakdown of this viral particle into fragments. And one such fragment would be loaded on this MHC, this receptor. You can see the blinking pathogen or the pathogenic fragment. And usually it is peptide. And so a peptide fragment from the pathogen would be loaded on this particle, which is known as MHC, which is actually a receptor or a complex, which is known as major histocompatibility complex. And this has the ability to load that particular fragment peptide on itself. And after this, 
another cell will approach it, the T cell, which will be activated. But there are a series of events that are involved in the activation of this particular T cell. You can watch the video. It's also in the section where you will get the detail about the activation of T cells. Now this T cell will recognize that pathogenic particle by interacting its TCR with the MHC of macrophage. And after this particular step, there are many different steps which you can easily see in my other video in my other lecture. And after the series of events, it will be activated. And we can compare with that particular person. You can see these two pictures that now the person after getting the name of the thief, he is more active, he is agitated, he is furious, and he is advancing towards the person responsible for the theft. Or we can also say that he is taking the option of presenting the name or identity of the thief to someone else, some other authorities like police and so on. So we can compare these two pictures with the activity teasers. Now let's come to the main topic of this lecture. We know that now T cells are activated. Now it's their turn to activate something else, which would be the B cell. Now it has the ability to activate B cell and more specifically, they are known as the helper T cell there because they're helping some cells to get itself activated. So now we are finally moving towards this thing, which is the B cell activation. You can see the picture of B cell. This B cell is quite simple and uh, you can see many receptors there. And I will talk about those surface receptors in a moment. But first, let's just talk about this yellow thing. This is actually a pathogen, any viral fungus or any other bacterial particle that is causing problems within our body that can cause problems within our body. And if we talk about the structure of B cell, at first we have to look at these blue structures, which are the B cell receptor or BCR. They are quite like the receptors that are present on T cells, which are known as TCR or T cell receptors. But here is the difference. We have another structures as well. These are the antibodies, but they are attached to the surface of B cells. That's why we call them the surface antibodies. We know that B cells ultimately has the role to produce the antibodies, but there are some antibodies that are also attached to its surface and they have a major role in the activation, in the recognition and in this whole process of B cell activation. I will come to that in a moment, but these antibodies are tightly bound or tightly attached to this BCR or the B cell receptors. And you can see that they are also attached to the surface. That's why they are getting the name of surface antibodies. Now what happens is let's now move towards the procedure. This pathogen would interact or these antibodies would interact with the incoming attacking invading pathogen. And after the interaction, it will recognize it and the B cell will then engulf it. And after engulfing that particular antigen, it will be broken down into fragments, just like the way a macrophage break down the pathogen into pieces and then present it to the MHC. The same procedure is repeated here. This antigen will be broken down into small fragments and one of the peptide, one of the smaller fragment would be then loaded on this MHC2 complex. The B cell is also an APC, just like the macrophage. It's, it also has the ability to present the fragment on its MHC receptor just like this manner and now it has been loaded the fragment or the peptide has been loaded on MHC now comes the next phase the second cell will approach this particular B cell that would be the T helper cell and it will interact with the MHC with the help of its TCR or the T cell receptor and in this case this cell would be the T helper cell or more specifically it would be T helper cell 2 we have many types of T helper cells, but here we are talking about the T helper cell type two. And this interaction is not enough. If you see this, this interaction is not enough. We need some co-stimulatory interaction as well. Additional interaction that can strengthen, that can confirm this bonding between TCR and MHC. And MHC also has the loaded fragment on itself. So here comes some other structures. You can see these two structures. If you look at the left side of your screen, you can see that there is this CD40 ligand, which can interact with the CD40 
receptor of B cells. These two things will interact with each other and they will conform the bonding between the bottom TCR and MHC. And after confirming this interaction, there comes another molecule which projects from the T helper cells. That is the CD4 receptor. That CD4 molecule will strengthen the bonding between these two things. And then finally, the interaction is strong enough to produce or move towards the next phase. Quickly recapping, we have two different kinds of interaction. First interaction was between the MHC and TCR along with this peptide fragment from the viral particle. And then comes the co-stimulatory interaction between these two things. And also CD4 will come into action and will strengthen the bonding between these two receptors, TCR and MHC. Then comes the third phase. We have this cell, T helper cell, it will start releasing a chemical. That would be the chemical signaling. The third step, it will release a chemical by the name of interleukin-4. For the sake of simplicity, let's just focus on interleukin-4. And that particular interleukin will move towards B cell. Now B cell also has receptor for this particular interleukin. This interleukin-4 will approach this B cell and it will be recognized by this ILR receptor on B cell, which is actually the interleukin receptors. And after that, series of number of changes will take place within the structure, within the body of this B cell. It will start producing different proteins. It will start producing different kind of molecules and which will result in process known as hypermutation. And due to all those mutation changes, it will modify itself or it will convert itself into a new kind of cell, which is known as plasma cell. This plasma cell here, you can see that it is now elongated. Earlier it was like a circular structure. Now it is more elongated because now the cytosol ratio or cytosolic ratio has been altered, modified and nucleus is not present at the center now it is somewhere close to the surface now at one side of the cell so now this cell this plasma cell has the ability to produce antibodies but important question here is what kind of antibody will this plasma cell produce the answer is quite simple it depends on these particular things these particular antibodies or these particular surface antibodies if here we have iga if IgA has recognized or interacted with this pathogen, then this particular plasma cell will produce IgA antibodies within our body, within our system. So you can see that this plasma cell will now start producing the antibodies and then they are released and they then fight against the pathogens. Then these antibodies can play a number of roles. They can lead to the process of opsonization where they can interact with the pathogen and then that particular pathogen can be engulfed by macrophage or any kind of phagocyte. Or they also have a number of other options I will discuss all the details. I will try to link the B cell activation and T cell activation in future lectures as well. Then we can discuss more detail about the next steps, next procedures that takes place within our body. So that was all about the B cell activation. I hope you have learned something new today. So thank you for listening and thank you for your patience.